For this video, I'm in the Flint suburb of Grand Blanc, Michigan. After sleeping here overnight, I begin the video at Creasy Bicentennial Park, which is in the west central part of Grand Blanc Township. Really quick, as if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. It also helps support this channel, and will prevent me in the future from trespassing and sleeping in parks overnight by getting a hotel room instead. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. Well, just like with a lot of places in Michigan, there's technically two places called Grand Blank. There's the city of Grand Blank, and then there's Grand Blank Charter Township, but both places are often thought of as the same. Grand Blank Township is the most populated township in all of Genesee County, and it has long been considered to be one of the nicer places to live in the Flint area. Some would say that it is the nicest, and with Fenton aside, it would be hard to argue that, and you'll see what I mean as we get further into the video, especially if you've been following along with all of my other videos that I've uploaded so far in the Flint area. So how does a place get to be named something like Grand Blank? <laughs> it's like the first part of the name is setting it up to be something spectacular and then the last part of the name makes it sound like it's nothing. Grand Blank. Well, unlike most other places in Genesee County, this place doesn't get its name from a place in New York. The word blank is actually French for white. So Grand Blank means Great White. So. Basically, Grand Blank was always meant for rich white suburbia. Hello, cancel culture. No, no, I mean, Grand Blank does mean great white in French, but Grand Blank received its name from the Chippewa Indians and the French fur traders who occupied this land in the 18th century. One theory for the name of Grand Blank, or Great White, is that there was a white settler with a bad reputation who married a Native American. Another is that there was a band of white Indians that settled in the area. Most of Genesee County was actually given the name of Grand Blank early on, as it was known as the Grand Blank Territory. This land was surveyed and it was decided upon either during the Treaty of Saginaw in 1819 or through the Treaty of Detroit in 1807. Historians can't figure out which one, but most agree that it was through one of those two. And this was before Michigan became a state, as at the time this was all just Michigan Territory. In 1837, however, Michigan did become a state, and even though Grand Blank was just a township and it was mostly undeveloped land, Grand Blank was actually one of the few communities that was being considered to become the state capital, but that title was given to Detroit, which was later given to Lansing, as Lansing is more centrally located in the state. But sometime in the mid-1800s, a place called Grand Blank Center was being settled, and that's the same place as where the city of Grand Blank sits today. There was also a second community called Gibsonville, which was located near the intersection of Saginaw Road and Hill Road, and today that area is full of chain retail and parking lots. But another fact is that today's Saginaw Road originally was an Indian trail stretching from Detroit all the way to Saginaw, and it was one of the first trails in all of Michigan before being converted to a wooden plank toll road. Anyway, when the railroad came through in 1862, it passed through Grand Blank Center and it bypassed Gibsonville, so Grand Blank Center is the community that saw growth. In 1930, Grand Blank was incorporated as a city and the community of Gibsonville faded away over time. Grand Blank was home to the first school in Michigan between Mackinac City and Waterford, and it was also home to the first consolidated school system in the state of Michigan, and there's a historic marker at the intersection of Bush and Saginaw to make sure that you know that and never forget it. That marker is also right outside of the original Grand Blank High School building, which was built in 1921. Today, it's the Perry Innovation Center. Meanwhile, this is today's Grand Blank High School, home of the Bobcats. Annual enrollment is around 2,500 students, and among the most notable alumni is NFL running back Mark Ingram II, who attended Grand Blank until his senior year, 
when he transferred to Flint Southwestern Academy. Track and field athletes Gina Gull and Grant Fisher, NHL player Ty Delandria, and actor Evan Peters. And right past it is the old high school with the historical marker that we just viewed. Anyway, Grand Blank schools today are considered by many to be the best in the area. That's why the homes in Grand Blank are more expensive than all the other areas in Genesee County, Fenton aside. Percentage-wise, Grand Blank's property taxes are lower than what you would see in Flint, but because of the home values, essentially residents here pay a higher price in taxes. And that's the biggest complaint among Grand Blanks residents, or at least the ones that I see in the comment section or ones that I see in forums brought up around the internet. One reason why property taxes in not only Grand Blank, but in Genesee County are pretty high is that a portion of these property taxes pay for not only Grand Blank schools, but also for the Flint Cultural Center as it helps pay for the theaters and museums there. Let's see what the property taxes are like for Grand Blank and compare it to some other places. So here you can see that Grand Blank City has a higher property tax rate than Grand Blank Township, even though they're a part of the same school district. And here's what it looks like for Mount Morris. Here's what it looks like for Flint. And here's what it looks like for Swartz Creek. So Grand Blank Township appears to have a lower property tax rate than most others in Genesee County, at least. Taking a look, however, at Port Huron in St. Clair County to the east, and you can see that the property taxes are significantly lower. You also have to wonder how much of these property taxes throughout Genesee County are going towards the Cultural Center and possibly other amenities in Flint. And by the way, that property tax estimator tool is available for everyone, for every township, village, and city in Michigan through Michigan.gov. Meanwhile, here's the backside of Grand Blank High School. When it comes to the economic stats for the city of Grand Blank, if you couldn't tell by now, the quality of life here is completely opposite from what you see in Flint. The population of the city is just over 8,000 and the median household income is $65,000 per year. 41% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $199,000, while the poverty rate is 8%. The median home values for both Grand Blank City and Township are among the highest that you'll find in all of Genesee County. When it comes to the crime rates, it's no surprise that they're well below average. Niche.com gives the public schools an A, which is also no surprise, and the Area Vibes livability score for Grand Blank is 83, with a low score in employment, which keeps the grade from being in the upper 80s or 90s. And that should be no surprise, as this is still the Flint metro area an area that once relied solely on manufacturing jobs from General Motors. Some more stats included here as you can see that the population of the city of Grand Blank has stayed around the same since the 2000 census counts and it probably won't go much higher than that as the city has no room to expand as it's surrounded by a charter township, which is something that I've explained in other videos, but a charter township basically just makes it harder for a city to annex land within said charter township. Anyway, you can also see that Genesee County has seen continuous population decline overall since around the same time.
technically this is downtown Grand Blanc and there's not much else to it. If there's one knock I have on Grand Blanc, it's that the downtown area, you know, doesn't really have much outside of chain restaurants and chain retail stores. If you head on over to Flushing or if you head on over to Davison on the far west and east sides of the Flint metro area, you see more of a downtown area and more of a classic main street. So that would be my biggest knock on Grand Blanc. And here you can see more of what I mean. This is technically still downtown Grand Blank, sort of, but you have fast food restaurants on both sides of the street and you have chain retail rather than local businesses like a local coffee shop or something. We do have local businesses. You should stop complaining and you should look around a little bit more. Maybe talk to some of the locals. Yeah, I'm sure you do have a few local spots here and there, but I'm just saying that I like the classic Main Street look, and I like having more local entities than what you guys have, because I saw quite a few fast food joints, but get rid of those and then we'll be talking. I like your sign though. Your welcome sign is cool. Now that we're on the other side of the tracks, to the left is the old General Motors Grand Blank Weld and Tool Center. The plant opened in 1942 and it closed in 2013. Upon closing the massive plant, it had only 350 or so hourly workers, which isn't much for a plant of this size. Obviously, it had many more back in the day. At the time of the plant closing, the workers were transferred to another plant in the Detroit suburb of Warren. Early on, this plant was actually used to manufacture tanks for World War II, which is true with many of Michigan's early auto factories. Now we're in Grand Blanc Township and we're outside of the city limits. And if you recall my earlier conversation about there being two communities originally in Grand Blanc Township, one being Grand Blanc Center and the other being Gibsonville, this is where Gibsonville once stood, at the intersection of Saginaw and Hill Roads. But today it's full of chain retail, or car dealerships and parking lots. And you would never know that a village once stood here without having deep knowledge of the area's history. I mean, maybe you could tell that there was something here. This is the first Baptist church and it has a historical marker right outside of it, but it's really the only thing that resembles something being here at one point. And now for the economic stats for Grand Blanc Township, as there are many more people living in it than in the city because the township is much bigger in area. Grand Blanc Township today is home to just under 40,000 people. Otherwise, the stats are pretty much the same for the township as it is for the city. The median household income is $74,000 per year, and 42% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $185,000, and the poverty rate is 7%. Alright, so with me being a YouTube creator, I'm able to gain access to some very powerful tools. That's right, I've become a very powerful person since I decided to change my career path into making videos for YouTube. And I'm all about showing off how powerful I have become. 
With that said, the power that I'm speaking of in this case is that I can see when most of you check out of the videos that I make, and it's usually right around the 12 or 14 minute mark for a video of this length, especially for a video that's on a suburb that isn't as interesting as a video of a larger city like Flint. So with that said, I won't be talking much throughout the rest of this video. That's also because I've mostly said everything that there is to say about a place like Grand Blank. Meanwhile, I continued my drive around what mostly is Grand Blank Charter Township, and in it, you'll see more of the main thoroughfares that go through the area and some of the neighborhoods. So if you're like me and sometimes you just enjoy seeing what areas look like, the rest of this video will be mostly that. And as you can imagine, I'm now going to go stare at myself in the mirror and admire myself while I ask my housekeeper to go get me some wine because I'm just that powerful and self-absorbed. While I was in Grand Blank, by the way, I actually bought myself a bigger pillow because my head grew that much bigger. Um, yeah, all right, okay, yeah, uh, not sure what that was supposed to be. All right, well, yeah, I'm just gonna stop talking like I said I was going to now. I think that's better, all right.
If you haven't noticed, we've been driving through a neighborhood that surrounds a golf course, a pretty big one at that. This is what used to be the Jewel of Grand Blanc Golf Course, as it was sold to a different group in early 2022. As reported by a local Flint station, Banana 1015, the new course is supposed to be downsized from 36 to 27 holes. Not sure why they would downsize from 36 to 27. Can't imagine it saving that much more money, but we'll wait and see.
and for sticking around towards the end of this video, I will reward you with some drone shots. That's right, some beautiful drone shots. You cannot find any better drone shots of the Grand Blank Water Tower than what you see right here. All right, all right. Well, in this video, you saw how Grand Blank, Michigan is a pretty nice area, a pretty nice suburb of Flint, Michigan at that. And for those who have not been to the Flint area, you might be surprised to see that not only Grand Blank is pretty nice, but there's also a couple of other nice places around Flint too. And to see those, make sure to check out my Flint playlist, which is linked down below. And with that said, I appreciate you watching, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes, so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Flint playlist or in my Michigan playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!